Hi everyone, welcome to Feline Jungle. My name is Viona, and if you're new to this channel, this channel is all about plants along with my two cats. If you're into that sort of a thing, then hit that subscribe button so you can watch my videos weekly. In today's video, we're not focusing on my plants, we're focusing on something very important if you have house plants, which are pots, and particularly terracotta pots. In today's video, I'm gonna go over a lot of my favorite terracotta pots and also a lot of questions that you guys asked me on social media, including how to clean my terracotta pots. Let's go! There's a lot of different materials for pots, but what I love about terracotta pots is because they're very affordable and also they're great for anyone who overwaters like myself because I tend to overwater and because of the porous material, it just soaks up all the excess water. There's also another misconception that terracotta pots are very basic and old fashioned, which is why I want to show you some of my more stylish designer terracotta pots that I love in my collection. The first one I want to show you, I guess, is the one I'm holding in my hand, which is from Front Range Clay Studios. It's a designer based in California, and they're known for their very simple geometric shapes like this one. They also have one that kind of looks like a flower but extruded, but I just love how simple and modern it is. I believe this one was around $24, which is a little bit more expensive, but it is handmade and I love it a lot. It also comes with a drainage hole, which is perfect for anyone who overwaters like myself. I only have one of this, but I do plan on collecting more in my collection. Another one that I really love that I have a lot from is this Japanese ceramicist called um, Michiko Shimida. And she is a actually a local based Brooklyn ceramicist. And here are some of her work. This one is actually comes in a set of three and it comes in different sizes. Like this is the tiny one, medium size, and then the large one. I believe this set is for $35. Hi, thing. So like this, as I was saying, this is um, comes in a set of three for like $45. And I just love how simple it is. It's just like simple inverted like pyramid um, cylinder shapes. And I just love how it comes with a saucer that fits perfectly. This set of pots, I like to put my Hoyas in there because Hoyas tend to grow very slowly, so they don't grow out of this pot too quickly. This one is my Hoya Kurtzii, and I just love how it flows out of the pot. I also have another Hoya in this set, which is the Hoya Matilda. It's kind of like the smaller version of the Hoya Obovada, and I just love how it fits in this pot. I've had it in here for like two months now, and it's just giving me this new leaf, so it's perfect for Hoyas. This is not a Hoya. In here I have a pink princess. It's a cutting that I took and I just recently put it in here. So it's good for like any propagations that you have too. Another one of her pots that I got is this one. This is a solo one that you purchase as one. And it just reminds me of like an eating bowl for like miso soup or something. And I just love it. This is around, I think, $13. I've seen her work on Amazon too. If you want to purchase them from Amazon or also from her website. I think I got this from Tiny Jungles, which is a local plant shop in Brooklyn. And I just love her work. This also comes with um, a saucer just for this pot. Another one of her work is this bowl. This is a uh, kind of like a bigger bowl that's perfect for succulents or placement of plants that you want. This is good for that. It's good for like a, a tabletop kind of decoration. And I believe I got this for around $35. This also comes with a saucer. And I just love her work. It just, you can tell immediately that it's her work. It's very simple, soft shapes. And I just really like that about her work. Another pot that you guys always ask me about is my booby pot. 
this pot I got from Rose Grown, which is a shop in Atlanta. And they're just known for like their booby pots. Uh, they're usually around like $40. This one I actually got for $20, I believe. It's part of her seconds. So she does sell um, pots that are not perfect, but to me, it doesn't really matter. Like the only like thing wrong with this pot was that it's not fully circular on top. And I believe there's like a, a slight uh, dent here, but that doesn't really bother me. So I got this for $20 and you can check out, I believe she still does seconds on Sundays, so you can check that out. And it actually was empty for around four months. And I was just searching for the perfect plant for it. Cause sometimes you just get a pot and you just know what plant you want in it, but you just don't get it. And this one, I finally got a booby pot. I mean, a booby cactus that fits perfectly in it. If you're also into like boobies and you want like a full body naked woman pot, this is a pot that I got from Idea Ceramics on Etsy. And I just love the quality of this too. It kind of has this glaze to it and it has a really nice finish. I believe this one was around 30 or 40 dollars i'm not sure but i just love how it also has like a really nice butt on the back so it's a very nice design i use it for my um, monstera stantiliana and it's just perfect to put a pole a moss pole sorry not just a pole but like a moss pole uh, just because it's so like um elongated it makes sure that this pole doesn't move around so perfect pot this is from Planta Planta. I absolutely love them. If you're into like funky, quirky face planters, they are the ones to go to. They're just all so funny. This one is the smaller one. It actually has legs that hang on a shelf like this. I haven't found the perfect plant for it yet because I just got it literally two days ago. I have to search for a plant for that. And then I also got this face planter that's super elongated. This one I'm planning on putting my Hoya Compacta in it. Just cause like the Hoya Compacta is also very funky. I think it'll be a very nice touch to cover his forehead with some curly hair from the Hoya. I also love how Resendo, which is the owner, worked very patiently with me to get me the perfect planter that looked exactly like me with the straight bangs and the big lips. Uh, this is part of his collection called Arnaldo. And they are all a little bit different depending on the artist. And you can totally text him and ask him exactly what you want and he'll send you a lot of pictures and work very closely with you. This one I believe was $37, but it's very cute and it, it just brings me a lot of joy. And I love how it has like a surprise face in the back. I did not expect that. They don't show that on their Etsy shop. So when I like turned to the back, I was like, oh my God, that is so cute. I need more of these. And yeah, I just love how it also has like the boobies and it has like four legs instead of two. I was expecting like two legs when I saw it on Etsy, but uh, yeah, it's very cute and it has like a drainage hole that kind of reminds me of a butthole just because of how it's placed. It just gives me a lot of joy. I have more common pots that you can get from Target that are still very stylish. Like this one, I found this at the clearance section for I think $2 or $4, I forget. But it's very cute modern pot. It's not like your typical terracotta pot with like the lip over here it kind of just looks like a teacup it also comes with a drainage hole and i actually got a couple of these because it was on clearance because it's so tiny this is perfect for succulents so in here i have what's called a bear claw succulent and it's just so fuzzy to touch i love how it contrasts with the terracotta pot also other pots that i got from target is this kind of funky shaped one it has like a heavier top and a kind of ribbed bottom portion of it this one was only eight dollars i think i also got this recently it comes with a plug so if you don't like the drainage hole you can actually plug it up 
Uh, it also is glazed inside, which I never had before. So I'm interested to see how it will affect how it, the terracotta ages. Cause I tend to get like the kind of the mineral buildup and things like that. I wonder if the glazed inside will prevent that from happening, which will be interesting. Since it's glazed, the, the first plant I thought about putting in here is my watermelon peperomia. Cause it's one of those plants that I killed like twice maybe and I find that it really likes the nursery pot so even though I mostly have terracotta pots I kept this watermelon peperomia in a nursery pot just because I know that it likes being in that kind of uh, more moist retaining pot material but since this is glazed I thought I'll do really good in it we'll see I just put this in here like a week ago so so far it's doing pretty good looks pretty nice this is another terracotta pot that I got from Target. I believe this was in the clearance section for around $5. It was such a steal. It kind of reminds me of this other one that I got from Target. Very minimalist, cylinder, clean shape. And I just love it a lot. I got a couple of these on sale. It also comes with that plug just in case you don't like having a drainage hole. And yeah, it's just very cute. I love it. This is another one that I want to show. This is also from Etsy. I forgot the name of the place I got it from, but I'll put it up here somewhere. And I just love how it's shaped. It has this very interesting shape that's perfect for hanging on my skylight. It's a hanging planter, which I don't usually see. And they did this really interesting thing with the glazing where they kind of uh, glazed the outside and then they have these markings on it to show the actual terracotta color, which I really like. This also comes with a drainage hole. Right now I have my Syndaptis in it. I think this will do really good in it. I think it'll trail hopefully onto the strings over here that um, keeps it up. And hopefully it'll just trail up. That'll be very nice. I believe this was like $30 maybe. I think it's $30 and it comes in different patterns too. If you don't like that kind of pinstripe pattern. If you don't use soil and use LECA, I have the perfect pot for you. This is a self-watering terracotta pot that I got from Amazon. It was a set of three or four. You can get them about like $6 or $12. I don't remember, but it comes like this. It has this glass container and then this terracotta pot. I actually drilled a drainage hole in it just to allow for a better water flow and circulation. And I keep LECA in here, which are these clay balls. That's also another growing medium aside from soil. And it does really nice in this. I have my Hoya Compacta, the variegated version. And when I got it from a plant swap, it was very dehydrated. So it wasn't doing well in soil and I made the jump to LECA and I needed a terracotta pot that's good for LECA. And this is so far doing pretty good. I realized that algae does grow in it. You can see the water's a little bit green. That's from all the algae. So you have to rinse it out a bit, almost weekly to keep the algae away. And yeah, that's pretty good in here. I almost forgot to mention this, but Ikea also has really nice terracotta pots. It's very simple. It doesn't have that lip over here like your regular ones. And it comes with a really nice saucer. I use it to like elevate all my other terracotta pots, but it can be used as like a saucer. It's very deep, like two inches. So usually what I do is just like flip it the other way and use it as a stand. But yeah, I love them. They're like $5 including the saucer. Like you can't go wrong with that. I also have other regular terracotta pots that you see in my collection. They make up like probably 70% of my collection. And I just get it at like your local Home Depot, Lowe's. They also come with like saucers. So are really affordable. If you know that you're gonna be needing a lot of terracotta pots, like how I do, I usually keep a lot in stock just in case I get extra plants. Um, you can get them at Amazon. I got mine for like a pack of eight terracotta pots, I think with saucers for like $20. I'll link it in the description below if you're interested. So yeah, there's many ways of getting terracotta pots, whether you want like your basic 
terracotta pot or a very nice designer one there's something for everyone <laughs> very important tip is always get a saucer even if it doesn't come with saucers you're gonna need extra saucers because you're gonna have pots without saucers and it's very important because then you always with a drainage hole it'll always leak out always water will come out from the bottom so i recommend everyone to get a saucer and saucers can be used for a lot of home decor projects for example i use them for my pendant lights in my dining room and they make really nice lights and it costs like five dollars the most for like a 10 inch one to like a dollar for a tiny one and you can just use it for a lot of different projects now we're on to the Q&A portion of this video and my number one asked question is why do my terracotta pots look so clean? Well, they actually don't really look that clean in person. Maybe it's like the photo quality. And I do prefer that the terracotta pots had some like mineral buildup. I think that it gives it characteristic. But I do clean it when I'm switching pots from one plant to another. Or if it's just very old and I want to clean it a bit. So I made a video on how I clean my terracotta pots and it's insane that it, you guys are so excited about it. I have like over 300k views on it and I just simply use water, vinegar, and soap and I just scrubbed away the kind of mineral buildup and like show the before and after. So I'll link it in the description below if you guys are interested in that. Another question I get which I think is very funny is that you guys ask me if I use saucers and I try to use saucers for all of them but I usually run out because I use it for like some kind of artsy project but yes I do use saucers. Another question I get is how do you tell the difference between mineral buildup and mold and I have the perfect example for you because I just found some mold on one of my pots. I actually don't know how it got there. I think it's because I just watered it and recently it's spring so it's been very moist in the air and maybe the moisture got captured in it but it's been molding a lot and how you can tell the difference between mineral buildup and mold is that with mold it's actually a little bit fuzzy. So if you look at it closer it's not just like kind of little dots or chalky feel. It's kind of fuzzy and moist and you'll see like the mold spots on it that are dark and that's how you can tell that it's mold so i've only had mold twice the first time i got it was in my old apartment and it was also because i overwatered. and how i treated it was just to use some um, fungicide not pesticide but fungicide and i mixed it with water and i just scrubbed away the mold and it did the trick it was gone immediately. I didn't have any mold issues afterwards. And I'm probably gonna do the same with this one and just use some kind of fungicide or soap just to like scrub it off. And that usually does the trick. You can also try to spray some of the fungicide inside the soil, that might help as well. Hope you enjoy my video about terracotta pots. As you can see, I really like terracotta color. I'm wearing it on my lips, I'm wearing it as my shirt, and I also decorate my house with terracotta. If you guys have any more questions on terracotta pots or terracotta fever related questions, then leave it in the description below. Here's my normal 10 second challenge. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Bye.